Layers of the Eyeball. Today, we're diving into the anatomy of the human eye, specifically, the layers of the eyeball. The human eye is a complex organ responsible for vision, allowing us to perceive and interpret the world around us. It's a roughly spherical structure, located in the eye socket of the skull. It is composed of various parts that work together to focus light and create an image. Layers of Eyeball The human eye is organized into three main layers. The outer fibrous layer. The middle vascular layer. And the inner neural layer. Each of these plays a unique and essential role in vision. We will discuss them, one by one. Fibrous layer. Let's start with the fibrous layer, the eye's outermost layer. The fibrous layer of the eye is the outermost layer of the eyeball. It provides shape and support to the eye, protecting the delicate inner structures. It is primarily composed of type 1 collagen fibers. It is not supplied by blood vessels. Components of the fibrous layer. The fibrous layer consists of two main parts, the sclera and the cornea. Number one, the sclera. The sclera is the opaque, white, outer layer of the eye. This is the main part of the outer layer, covering most of the eyeball. It is composed of dense connective tissue, primarily type 1 collagen fibers, which are arranged in a way that gives it its white, opaque appearance. The sclera provides attachment points for the extraocular muscles, which are responsible for eye movement. It provides structural support and protection to the eye. Number 2. The cornea. The cornea is the transparent, anterior part of the eye. It is also composed of type 1 collagen fibers. But these fibers are arranged in a uniform, parallel manner that makes cornea transparent. This allows light to pass through. The cornea plays a crucial role in focusing light onto the retina. It bends light as it enters the eye, performing about 65 to 75 percent of the total refraction needed to focus light onto the retina. The lens then further refines this focus, ensuring a clear image is formed on the retina. So, why does the cornea appear clear while the sclera is white, even though both are made from the same collagen? Even though both sclera and cornea are made of same type 1 collagen fibers, they appear different due to two reasons. Arrangement of collagen fibers and water content. The sclera's collagen fibers are arranged randomly creating a non-uniform texture that scatters light, resulting in its white appearance. In contrast, the cornea's collagen fibers are arranged in a highly ordered, parallel fashion, allowing light to pass through without significant scattering and maintaining its transparency. Additionally, the cornea has a lower water content compared to the sclera, further contributing to its transparency. Does fibrous layer receive no blood supply? Yes, the fibrous layer of the eye consisting of the sclera and cornea, is largely avascular, meaning it receives little to no direct blood supply. It relies on alternative methods for receiving oxygen and nutrients. The sclera relies on surrounding structures for its nutrition, while the cornea primarily receives nutrients through diffusion from the surrounding aqueous humor. Why are corneal transplants so successful? Corneal transplants are successful because of two reasons. The avascular nature of the cornea is a major reason why corneal transplants are so successful. The lack of blood vessels reduces the number of immune cells that can reach the cornea from the bloodstream. This helps to minimize rejection by the recipient's immune system. The cornea exhibits immune privilege, meaning it can evade the body's immune system, particularly when transplanted. This allows for successful corneal transplantation where tissue from a donor can survive in a recipient without being rejected. Next layer after fibrous layer is the vascular layer. The middle vascular layer of the eye is called the uvea or uveal tract. It lies between the outer fibrous layer, sclera, and the inner nervous layer, retina. The uvea provides nourishment and oxygen to the outer retina and regulates light entry. Components of the uvea the uvea has three main parts, the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. Number 1. Choroid. The choroid is a thin, pigmented, vascular layer in the eye. 
It is composed of loose connective tissue with a network of blood vessels. It is the posterior portion of uvea and contains the blood vessels that supply the retina. It delivers oxygen and nutrients to the outer retina, which is crucial for vision. It contains melanin, which helps absorb excess light and prevent reflection within the eye. The choroid also plays a role in regulating intraocular pressure by providing a pathway for fluid drainage and regulating blood flow. Site for Cancer Metastasis The choroid is the most common ocular site for metastatic cancers owing to its abundant vascular supply. It is a common site for metastasis from other cancers, particularly those with a high rate of bloodborne spread, like breast and lung cancer. Its rich vascular supply makes it an easy target for migrating cancer cells via the bloodstream. Number 2. The ciliary body. The ciliary body is a ring-shaped structure within the eye. That plays a crucial role in eye function. It is positioned behind the iris and in front of the choroid so it connects the iris to the choroid. It's a 5 to 6 millimeters wide ring of tissue that extends from the scleral spur to the aura serrata. The ciliary body forms a complete ring around the iris, and it is triangular in shape when viewed in cross-section. It is responsible for producing the aqueous humor in the eye. The ciliary body is composed of two components, the ciliary muscle and the ciliary processes. The ciliary muscle helps change the shape of the lens to focus on objects at different distances. While the ciliary processes produce aqueous humor. Number 3. The iris. The iris is the colored part of the eye. Its color is determined by the amount of melanin pigment it contains. It is located behind the cornea and in front of the lens. It is a muscular ring surrounding the pupil, which is a black opening in the center of the iris. Its primary function is to regulate the amount of light entering the eye by controlling the size of the pupil. It is composed of smooth muscles that contract and relax, causing pupil dilation and constriction. Finally, we reach the neural layer, called the retina. Lining the inner surface of the eye, the neural tissue layer of the eye is called the retina. It is located at the back of the eyeball, lining the inner surface. It is a complex layer of cells that acts as a light-sensitive film, converting light into electrical signals that are sent to the brain for processing. It contains photoreceptor cells, rods and cones, that detect light, as well as other neurons like bipolar cells and ganglion cells that transmit signals to the brain. It is considered as a part of the central nervous system. The retina is crucial for vision, and damage to it can lead to vision loss or blindness. Cancer of retina. Retinoblastoma is a cancer that starts in the retina. It is caused by abnormal growth of retinal cells, which can form a tumor. The tumors can affect one or both eyes. It's typically diagnosed in children under 5, with most cases occurring before age 2. Retinoblastoma can cause vision loss and, if not treated, can spread to other parts of the body. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial for preserving vision and stopping the cancer from spreading. Signs of retinoblastoma Such as a white pupil, leukocoria, or a squint, should be checked by a doctor as soon as possible. Final thoughts The human eye is truly a masterpiece of biological design, from its tough outer protection to its delicate, light-sensitive inner layers. Understanding its structure not only deepens our appreciation for how we see, but also highlights the importance of caring for and protecting our vision. So take care of those eyes. They're your windows to the world.